Folks, uh, in this video, I will demonstrate the usage of uh, TQM module and human resources. The first thing that you will look at is go back and look at your Performa balance scorecards. Okay, so when you look at this, look at this learning and growth aspect. So the first thing that you will see is it's saying, okay, employee growth rate, employee turnover rate, and employee productivity. These are the two dimensions based on which you are being quantified or uh, you're being uh, evaluated. So the first thing is turnover rate less than 7% and turnover, uh, employee productivity greater than 104%. Now let's look at your decisions, human resource management, okay? So basically right now my uh, turnover rate is 7%, which is slightly around that and my productivity is 102 percent this is by invest zero dollars and zero in number of training hours for example let's see see uh, my turnover rate is 9.1 per 9.9 percent which is far higher than seven percent and this is supposed to be 104 percent i'm only having 100 percent so the maximum amount that i can actually spend on recruitment is five thousand uh, per worker and number of uh, you know uh, what do you call, uh, training hours is 80. So for simplicity, I would say put 5,080. And here, see the cost of this initiative uh, without these two initiatives is $396,000. Okay, it's our administrative costs. And this initiative is costing you about close to a million dollars and improving your productivity by about 5%. Okay, and your turnover rate is declined by about 3%. It was 9.9, now it's 6.9. It's below 7% what is required, and this is above 104% what is required. So that meets the criteria. And second thing, do you always have to put 5,080? No, but first, uh, HR module starts in round two. So therefore, my recommendation is always going to be uh, invest in this uh, $5,000 per worker initially in round two and round three. And then from round four onwards, you can continue to reduce it a little bit when TQM starts affecting as well. So again, always cross check the, these numbers with what is required. As long as you're meeting, you can continue to reduce the allocation of resources here. Okay, so this is a worthwhile investment, I would say. Now let's look at your TQM. Uh, so when you're actually looking at TQM, you will notice that there are a few things that this actually affects. The first one being material costs. Okay. Second one being labor costs. Third one, reduction in R&D cycle time, reduction in uh, administrative costs, and demand increase. Now let's go back. I would say, you know, before even touching this, I would say you should go and put in all your inputs, including your finance. Okay. Uh, maybe not finance, but everything other than finance, uh, put air and TQM, put all your inputs. Then I would say go check your pro forma income statement. Okay, so here is your direct labor costs. This is your material costs. This is your administrative costs. Okay. So these are the three things that are being affected. In addition to this, this is R&D cycle, demand increase. These are the other two dimensions that this TQM is going to affect. So when I'm looking at my material cost, this is about 34%. This is significant percentage of my any revenue that I'm actually generating. Also, 18.6%. This is also very significant. When I look at admin costs, this is very small, nominal, about 1.6%, okay? So where should my emphasis lie? My emphasis should lie in reducing my material labor costs. And when I go to my decisions and look at an R&D cycle time, this product traditionally is coming out in October, September 26. This one is coming two years later uh, in June 28, okay, which is in round uh, four, uh, I would say. Uh, not even round four, round five is when it comes out. Okay, and then this is in 2016, October 13th and September, right? As you see this, I've done the same notations as to whatever I found there, okay? And these are the costs that I see in terms of what are happening. So the reason why I'm demonstrating this is so that you will understand the differences as to where it is most impactful, where it is not, and how you should use TQM. Now let's go to TQM, okay? So now when you click here, this tells me that 1.5 million 
per initiative is the maximum per round. However, over all rounds, okay, four million is the maximum. That means that if I'm investing $1.5 million in round three, 1.5 million in round four, I should not input 1.5 million in round five because I will be wasting the additional 500,000 that I'm putting in there. So therefore, what do I do? I only put 1.5 million in round three, 1.5 million in round four, and 1 million in round five. That is it. So this is about each of the initiatives, not the total, okay? Uh, total can be up to $15 million, which you'll see here. So how do I know which one is which one affecting? So look at this one, okay? This is saying material cost reduction. As you saw, material cost was about 34% of my total cost structure, okay? Costing me about my revenue, 34% of my revenues, okay? So 1,500, okay? Now just in time inventory, okay? Material cost and administrative cost. Let's assume just for a you know, technical uh, demonstration purposes, let me do this. See, I invested 1.5 million. Each of those initiatives has costing me $15 million. See, worst case scenario, 4%, 0.3% reduction in my uh, material cost, 5.6 reduction, and so forth, as you can actually see, reduction in R&D cycle time. Now, first thing that I wanna see is go and see R&D cycle, what happened to it. The benefit of this is it takes effect in the same year. Now, when you actually look at this, Okay, compare this. This was coming out in September. Now it's coming out in July. This was coming out in June 28, and now it is coming out in 27. So instead of round five, June of round five, it's coming out in round four, uh, October. Okay, and then uh, at this point, when you actually see this was coming out in October, now it's coming by July. Uh, this was coming out in late September, or early September. Now it's coming out in early July. So significant improvement that means that i can start selling my newer product earlier and earlier i'm able to find to my product much further uh, compared to what i could previously okay so as i told you this is the round like round three round four is when you actually tweak your product low end product to give it configuration of round six that is one and only time when you actually alter this product okay now let's look at this now let's look at the cost structure. What happened to my cost, right? So now let's go to pro forma income statement. Okay, so when you actually see that, okay, my material cost was what? See, this was $50.3 million. Now it is only 48.119. My previously $27.4 million, now $25.2 million. Administrative cost, it was Two million dollar, two point three, two point three five five million dollars. Now it is two point eight. So basically, I saved only three hundred thousand dollars a year. Okay, overall profitability was twenty two million. Now it's only close to fifteen million. That means I lost significant profit. Of is this really worth this investment? Okay, so let's see. Post cost of material is forty eight one one nine. Okay, uh, this is twenty. Five, seven to one, okay. Administrative cost, okay, two zero zero eight, okay. Okay, now let's see the difference, okay. Okay, so. So basically I said five, about $4.2 million. While I lost profitability of how much difference? Okay, about $7 million reduction in profitability. Uh, that is phenomenal loss of profitability. Well, then why do I invest in TQM? The big thing that you should understand, the TQM 
Okay, this cost savings that I've seen, these are not just for one round. These will go on forever. Even if I stop investing in round four, I don't want to put any money into my DQM. I will still see a significant amount of that. However, can I justify this, spending about $3 million or $3.5 million just to do this? Even in 10 rounds, I will not be able to record my investment. So basically trying to focus on admin costs is not such a big deal or not, not, not a great way of using money. On the contrary for these, it is worthwhile. So let's look at this. What else can I do here in TQM? First thing that you need to do is you don't indiscriminately, because this is not an infinite resource. We are not in a communist country and you're not running communist country and you're not King Jong. Oh, okay. And just to throw money at things that you actually think. Okay. So, uh, so what do you do? You put money into things where, which has highest efficiency. That's how we work. Okay. Here, this is material cost reduction. So this is full amount is justified. Okay, here look at the material cost and administrative costs. I don't care about administrative costs. So let's say I'm putting a million dollars. I'll spread this over four rounds rather than three rounds, okay? Uh, reduces labor cost, that's important to me. Okay, channel support system. Increase its distribution channel efficiency and, you know, so I'm not putting money into this because right now I'm not focusing on demand increase. If you would like to, that's a different story. Okay, concurrent engineering, R&D cycle time. So you saw this decrease, right, from September to June, June and from here, uh, June 28 to uh, October 27, and then from here, okay, from October to July and uh, third week of July versus, you know, uh, second, first week of July. So these are all important changes. So I, I would like to invest that. I would like to come into the market early with my new products. So here, uh, I will keep that material cost and increased demand. So I don't care about increasing material demand, uh, but I do care about lowering my material cost. Benchmark prediction reduces administrative costs. I don't want to put any into this okay, because it was not such quality R&D cycle time increases demand for my product. So yes, I want to reduce my R&D cycle time and putting the money in. Okay, uh, Reduces labor costs and material costs. Both are important to me. I'm keeping the money. And the final one is adopting TQM strategies reduces material cost and reduces some labor costs. So these are important, so I will keep it, okay? So my focus is what? Uh, reducing material cost, reducing labor cost, reducing R&D cycle time. These have been the three focus of mine. So therefore I readjusted mine. And do you see this? Now it is 11,000 only, I mean 11 million only. So 4 million reduction. So. Overall, my profitability was reduced by $7 million. Now it only will be reduced by about $4 million. So now let me go and see R&D cycle time. It stays the same because the two initiatives that help me you know, reduce uh, R&D cycle time, I put my full investment into it. Okay, now let's go look into pro forma income statement. What happened here? Okay, so my profitability jumped up from 14 to 16,950, so 2 million increase in profitability after uh, you know, close to you know, a 2 million dollar improvement on that. So because I reduced 4 million dollars. So now this is an important improvement for me. So therefore I will stick with this, okay? So, uh, so th this is all it is to TQM. You're trying to improve the efficiency and you're justifying the cost. The reason why this is an okay proposition for me, for example, in a this is what, 16,950. Okay. So while I spend $11 million, I saved about, my, my profitability loss is only $5 million. So that means 6 million of my expenditure into it is already paid for itself get indirect reduction of cost. Now my R&D, that is kind of very difficult to say, you know, how it is impacting, but it actually helps me sell my product in more quantity when I do that, because my better product is available to the customer much earlier. So that justifies, let's say another $2 million or $3 million. So 75% of my cost structure has already been justified in direct returns for one round. Even if I put $0 next round, these benefits will continue for foreseeable future, which makes it worthwhile 
uh, in long run. So however, I'll continue to invest in these initiatives to maximize the benefit. So instead of 4%, 7%. And one last thing, labor costs. These labor costs for me in this particular thing are lower because of my higher automation levels at everything. Uh, so for some of you, for the same level of production, these labor costs might be much higher. That means the cost savings that you generate are much more significant if you have not yet automated your plans as much. So that brings to the end of your TQM model. But one last thing that I will go over again on TQM is that, see, you only put money into things that make sense to you. Material costs, labor costs, or any cycle time, okay? So a reduction in administrative costs is completely useless for you. It is just trying to tell you that you don't throw money at it. If you throw money at it, you're losing it, okay? If you're just, you know, indiscriminately using resources. Demand increase, if you have lower demand or if you are actually able to, you're not sold out, for example, okay, you're not coming to close out, closing to sold out levels, then maybe it makes sense to you uh, putting some money into this effort. Otherwise, I would not really recommend doing much of that. So that concludes our discussion on um, our TQM model. And uh, thank you.